Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast exploring Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jimmy Fowler, Elder Canada at Redeemer Fellowship. How you feeling? I feel good. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Nothing like going to a memorial. Well, a then, celebration, yeah. yeah a celebration memorial of, celebration, yeah. yeah. That was uh, Pastor Pat's mom. Correct. Passed away recently. Yep. And so uh, we were all there. His family was there. And, um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Jimmy read scripture. Yep. Uh, Rob read some scripture. Yep. Um, I gave the sermon part. Pat gave the eulogy. Mm-hmm. Man, Pat's words were really good. Really, really good. Really good. Good go- gospel, hardcore gospel, but also hardcore family love. Yep. And that last line. Do you remember his last line? You don't remember. The last that. line about uh, the last line the that son? he said. What did he say? The very last thing that he said. Uh, amen. Nope. He talked about like, thank you for. Uh, he said, "Thanks, mom. Thanks, mom, for teaching me to focus on the things that are most important." He looked over, uh, and he, to her, and he said, "Thanks, mom." And I was like, "Damn, it was just great. I That's loved really it." Good. Yeah, man. It was was, uh, and it you know, people. It was, she was you know she was elderly, but it was mm-hmm. still pretty early for her to go. Oh yeah. But it was a good time, man. Just to be really good. With all the family and. Uh, and it was fun to admit to everyone that uh, I had a smoke with his mom one time. Uh, that was pretty fun. Yeah, I'm sure. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> you said that. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> just doing my thing. Just doing your thing. I, I smoke with mom. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right. So we got to. We're, 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 we're doing on, something a little bit different. Yeah, we have to. We have to issue. This is like um, an update. This yeah, we're doing an update before the podcast. Before it really launches. So here's the thing: we recorded an episode on the whole Paige Patterson thing last wait, Wednesday. Wait, what's the Paige Patterson thing? Paige Patterson and women. Am I? What do you talk about? Yeah, Why what is that? Gonna... What is Paige Patterson and women? And Paige... I'm trying to. Oh, okay. Sorry. Summarize the, it for everybody. Oh, sorry. The comment, Jeez. the inappropriate comments he made uh, about young women, right. about women in general, and then um, uh, the. What he was talking about, uh, a woman who had been abused, mm-hmm. sending her back. Okay. So those are the those are the big ones. Those are the big ones. Those are the big ones. And so, uh, anyway, so we recorded that episode on Wednesday. And we talked about those things, and we branched into some other things. Some other things, exactly, which you're going to hear about in a moment. Um, but then, and then, I, I don't know how, but Dr. Patterson found out we had an episode dropping. Oh, yeah. On Monday. Oh, we were putting him on blast. And oh, he was like, oh, I got to Oh, he goes, oh, wait, Doctrine and Devotion's got an episode talking about this. I'm going to issue my apology on Thursday. Boom. <laughs> Boom. And so he did. He issued an apology. Uh, yeah, we'll link to that in the in the show notes along with everything else that we're linking to here. Yeah, exactly. And so, um, so anyway, so we thought it'd be good to, you know, redo the introduction. Yeah. Uh, or and, just hack on the yeah, this new introduction, and, and, and just because we want to address these things, because it wasn't just him. Like Steve Gaines, president of Correct. the Southern Baptist Convention, said some stuff, and so now that people are beginning to do what we say they should be doing, mm-hmm. the episode that we already recorded, we thought, exactly. well, let's address these things and interact with them and say, you know, how we think it's good or not so good or whatever. Um, because if we just really first, we talked about just scrapping the whole episode, yeah. Because like, well, now he's apologized. We don't want to pile on exactly if somebody's apologizing. But then we thought, no, we still have it. It's still an important conversation, and there are parts of it that are silly, of course. Yeah. Um, but instead, why don't we go ahead and address the new stuff on the front end, and then just let the old thing roll? Yeah, right? I right. think that's the way to go. All right. So first things first, we've got um, Paige the, Patterson's apology. The apology, an apology to God's people, May tenth, twenty eighteen. I'm going to read it. It's not that long. I'm going to read right, the whole go ahead. thing. Pastoral ministry that occurred fifty four years ago repeated as an illustration in sermons on more than one occasion, as well as another sermon illustration used to explain a Hebrew word, bana, build or construct, Genesis 2.22, have obviously been hurtful to women in several possible ways. I wish to apologize to every woman who has been wounded by anything I have said that was inappropriate or that lacked clarity. We live in a world of hurt and sorrow, and the last thing that I need to do is add to anyone's heartache. Please forgive the failure to be as thoughtful and careful in my extemporaneous expressions as I should have been. I would like to reiterate the simple truth that I utterly reject any form of abuse in demeaning or threatening talk, in physical blows, or in forced sexual acts. There is no excuse for anyone to use intemperate language or to attempt to injure another person. The Spirit of Christ is one of comfort, kindness, encouragement, truth, and grace. And that is what I desire my voice to always be. To all people, I offer my apology, but especially to women, to the family of Southern Baptists, my friends, and the churches. I sincerely pray that somehow this apology will show my heart 
and may strengthen you in the love and graciousness of Christ. Paige Patterson, President, SWBTS. Mm. All right. So there's his apology. Now, this is one of the things that we said. This is a little out of order because we've, we, you know, we, if you're listening to this and you don't know what's going on here, it might be a little confusing. Most of you, I think, have been following this so, to yeah. some degree. So one of the things that we said in our episode was uh, there needs to be an apology. Yeah. A, a legit, real apology. And here it is. He's, he's issued an apology. So when you read this, what was your immediate impression? My immediate impression was uh, the tone of it. it. It it didn't really feel like an apology. Now, are you just being picky at this point? I mean, no. you call you call <laughs> for an apology. Homeboy an apology. issues an apology, and now you're like, yeah, I'm not really feeling it. Well, it could be. I, maybe maybe I am. Maybe I'm um, maybe I'm jaded. Who knows? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I don't really trust his uh, uh, his hermeneutics. You know, because I mean. He says banana. He wants to talk about that stuff. But remember the episode on, uh, on wine? Oh, <laughs> like He just had this whole thing. Uh, that's a joke, people. That's a callback to episode four. Uh, but one of the things is it, it felt like it was like a – people are expecting me to apologize, so I'm going to say something. Yeah, I know that, what you mean. I know it, what you mean. He said some good things in here. He said right? some, yeah, he, said he some really said, good things. He said, I apologize to every woman who has been wounded by anything that I have said that was inappropriate or lacked clarity. Yeah. Um, and so I think you know some of these are, are good statements. I'm with you though in that there is, there's something that felt off about it. And one of the things that felt off about this to me was the fact that right out of the gate he puts this in the context of something that he said 54 years ago, which clearly is a means of distancing himself from what he said. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it felt like he was saying, "Oh, look, it happened so long it was ago, half a century ago." I'm that old. I'm that I said old. This <laughs> a, a half a century ago. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that old. <laughs> so I mean, honestly, like, and that, but then he even not only that. Hey guys, this has been repeated as an illustration in sermons on more than one occasion. Yeah. So he's saying, listen, it was first fifty four years ago, and then I've said it multiple times, yeah. but now it's become an issue. So I just I don't like that. And here's the thing, I, I I'm, I'm picky about apologies. Not apologies offered to me, like whatever, man. I'm I generally uh, with with people that have hurt me or sinned against me. Uh, I'm I'm ready to forgive. Yeah. Um, except Owen Strayan, that guy, man, he's on my list. He's on your list. <laughs> oh man, it's a short list. I'm so, oh, it's a very short <laughs> list. <laughs> I'm just teasing Owen. So um, not like he listens. Oh, he listens. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, Jared's gonna tell him. That's oh, man. all. They play it on the CD player on the short bus. <laughs> <laughs> Serving a li- okay. So they had a few things going on. All right. There. So what I was gonna say though, what I was gonna say, because he's short, you know, it's a short. Bus. I know. I get That's it. Saying, I understand. Okay? It. I'm just. Saying. I know, but I'm moving on. All right. Gotta move I'm on. moving on because this. So is- I, I, yeah, I, I expect an apo- a real apology when I'm yeah. coaching people, discipling guys. An apology has to be given without qualification without yes. equivocation you got to give the apology own your sin this is what i did that was wrong it's not just that it hurt you right yeah. it, it, it's i'm not sorry that merely that you got, got hurt. hurt i'm sorry yeah. for what i did that's it that's different and, and he, I mean, we should know, little, you know what here's the thing though people we should know about that especially those that are married you should understand that concept at least for for me Early on my in our marriage, my apologies were exactly what you're talking about, like equivocating. Yeah. And like, you guys almost got divorced. And we almost got divorced. <laughs> <laughs> things like, yeah, uh, you know, hey, listen, I'm really sorry that you were hurt by the things that I said, as they were true. And but you know, if I hadn't, if you hadn't come at me in this way, right, then this wouldn't have happened. Yeah, kind of a all thing. of those. Every time we offer an apology, like, listen, I had a really bad day. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, but I had a really bad day. Yeah. My boss was on my case all day. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, has, not, I don't care about that. I care about what you did. Exactly. Exactly. It's starting to rain, Joe. That's why he, yeah, you're here. What, that is that? what is that noise? That's called rain. Oh, That's goodness. raindrops. I ain't going out there. Um, <laughs> all right. So, okay. So he issued an apology yeah. uh, when he said he had nothing to apologize for initially. Correct. So now he's issued an apology. Uh, and clearly, it's, I mean, there's, a, there's you know thousands of women signing the, yeah. these petitions. There are people talking about it. And to be honest... I mean, here's what I, I I feel bad sort of saying this, but I'm 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 drawing conclusions that these are just my conclusions, right? For the record, for the record, for the record, these are just is, my conclusions. His views do not represent those of Joe Thorne, exactly, of Doctrine and Devotion officially, exactly, or of Redeemer Fellowship, correct? Certainly not of Jesus. Uh, okay, uh, go yes, ahead. that's exactly it. Uh, so Steve Gaines put out something. Yeah, he did. Now I find it funny that Steve Gaines. Put out what he what his his letter or what, uh, his statement to uh, the SBC mm-hmm. or BP News, right? Yep. 
And in there, he mentions that he personally has talked with uh, Homeboy Patterson Mm -hmm. about what he did not like and appreciate about what he said. Like, he kind of laid all... He just said, I talked to him personally and in in strong terms told him where he was wrong. Mm -hmm. Now, all of a sudden, we get an apology from from Paige Patterson. Yeah. To me, it, it, it feels like, it seems like, you know, that's where I'm like, okay, is this really an apology? Well, when, just because, well, okay, let me push back. All right, push back. All right. So even if Steve Gaines went to him and said, bro, that was messed up, you need to apologize, yeah. and then he apologized, that doesn't make it wrong. Yeah, but it's not, it's, if it's not an actual apology... Right. Like if it's just but the fact that you're talking about how Steve Gaines went to him first. Oh, yeah, I don't mind that. I think that's good. What I, what I, I think what's upsetting, though, is uh, if it's not an apology, you're just doing the apology for public appearances. Right. That's the part. Now, I could be absolutely wrong. Yeah, we don't know. We, we don't, don't know. know. And I might be. I'm probably listen, wrong. I, listen, here's the thing. I, that's why I said for the record, it's only my thought, not yours. Yeah, definitely not my thought. But I mean, like, I don't like I don't think it's a very good apology. And I've had some people online say, hey, hey. It's the heart, man. All, what matters is the heart, not the words that they use. And I basically said, no. Uh, yeah, the heart, yes, the heart is what matters, but a contrite heart will manifest itself with words. Yeah. Okay? And sorry, bro. Or, and action. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I do think it's going to manifest itself uh, with words. And so, all right, so I'm not really, like, I don't think it's a great apology. Um, I would rather him say, like, I regret what I said. I regret what I meant. I, I regret like how I handled it. Whatever, mm-hmm. I, a little something, a little more with a little more ownership of it. But then Steve Gaines, um, you know, Steve Gaines uh, had some good things to say here as a president of the SBC. Yeah, um, and he also kind of, uh, uh, you know, I think it was also really good of him to lay out how this all works because he he talked about mm-hmm. you know some people have called for me to stop Dr. Patterson from preaching yeah. the convention sermon in Dallas. The SBC president does not have the authority to make that decision. Yeah. You know, uh, neither does the committee or the order of business. Uh, it was the message of the 2017 SBC meeting that selected Dr. Patterson to preach the 2018 convention sermon. There are only two scenarios in which Dr. Patterson will not preach the convention sermon. One, the messengers of the SBC vote at the annual meeting in Dallas for him not to do so. Or two, Dr. Patterson personally withdraws from that responsibility. All right. And In then, either case, there's an alternate preacher. Yeah, Doctor Key Bowman. Key Key Kai Key Kai Bowman. Because if it's a T, it'd be a tie. So it'd be guy be Kai Kai. Yeah, like K-I-E. Cobra Kai. <gasps> He's a Cobra. Have you watched uh, yeah. it yet? No, I haven't watched it. No, I ain't got time for that. Oh, I'm gonna watch it now that now that uh, Lethal Weapon ruined everything. Now, uh, listen, we, we can't get into that right now. One of the other things he said in here that I like, he said he said a couple things in here. So I I want to give Gain some props here. Um, so. He, uh, you mentioned that you know he said I talked to Patterson in person yep. regarding his comments. Told him I disagree with the yep. counsel he gave to the woman who was married to the abusive husband. And then he said, I personally believe that if a husband abuses his wife physically, the wife like, should yep. immediately one notify the police and follow their instructions. Two, remove herself and her children from physically, physically from the abusive husband under the protection of the police for her safety. Three, notify the family's pastor so the church can engage in church discipline toward the abuser. Mm-hmm. The church should also seek to come alongside the woman to help her in any way possible to ensure her protection and care. Realistically, those women are oftentimes more likely to come to the church before they go to the cops, so the, the church is going to have to play a role in yeah. helping them, helping the woman connect to the police. Um, and then if she won't go, then uh, we know about the crime and we're going to have to report it anyways. Um, but yeah, good stuff there. Good, but here, here's the thing. Here's here's Patterson, not Patterson, I'm sorry. Uh, Gaines gives that apology that kind of you, you were talking about that we're looking for yeah. as far as like unequivocal all that. On behalf of the SBC, I ask for the forgiveness of all women who have been hurt by these comments and the issue of ill treatment of women within churches in particular. I believe we should esteem and regard women the same way Jesus did during his earthly ministry. Women are created in the image of God and are of great value and worth. The church especially is no place for misogyny or disrespect for anyone. This year marks the 100th anniversary of women being messengers to the SBC annual meeting. It is my prayer that this year will also mark a renewed commitment to honoring women and their contributions to our churches and conventions. That to uh, me is, yeah. that, 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 that's, that's powerful. That yeah. right there. What, do we, what do we say to that? Bada bam. Bada bam. That, that, that's a bada bam. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's, that's, that's how you do it. That, that yeah, is not how the you other do way. It. No, no, Don't no. do it the other way. This is how we do it. Yeah, no. 54 years ago, one time I said this thing. Oops. <laughs> it's like the Britney Spears apology. Oops. Did it again. Sorry. I, so 
I'm very thankful. Yeah. Yeah. Steve uh, Gaines did a good job. Here. I'm very thankful for uh, to Pastor Gaines and and his leadership in this. Yeah. And Gaines has good hair. You notice that? Uh, he does. Look at that guy. He looks like Alec Baldwin. Like no. the, like the older, fatter Alec Baldwin. Yeah. Like today. He looks like Alec. Look at look at that picture. He looks like Alec Baldwin. No, he does not. He he's does. Got, he's got the Baldwin hair. Yeah, he's got the Baldwin hair. But he's got like there's actually a smile. He's smiling. That that Baldwin never smiles. No, no. In fact, it, it would be a different finger up if it was Baldwin. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So listen, listen to our episode yep. here. Um, listen, we were just sitting down to talk about Patterson and uh, and listen. You know, he said some inappropriate things. You know, we might have evened it out and said a few inappropriate things on this episode. So that, that it, sounds it, like us. Enjoy those. Maybe we'll have to apologize too. And if we do, I know how I'm going to do it. Oh, well, you know, this uh, <laughs> for things I said 54 years ago. No, a few, a few weeks ago, you know, like a long time ago. I said <laughs> um, but we wind up talking about um, not only Patterson, but also uh, women in ministry, uh, misogyny, yep. Yep. prejudice, belittling, uh, Beth Moore, and a whole lot more. So check it out. Let us know what you think. And uh, yeah, should be fun. Here it comes. What? Here it comes. Here it comes. I don't Here know. I was trying to be like, trying to segue into it. Oh, that was a great segue. That was no. Yeah. No. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm okay can I do it again? Can I do it again? Yeah. Do it. Go. Here Never comes mind. the episode. Oh. oh, geez. Happy Monday. Oh, it's such a good Monday. Actually, I don't know what the weather's like right now because we're recording in the past. Exactly. We're going, but we're in the future. When this airs, we're in the future, but we don't know what it's like because we're not actually there. Man, we're, yeah. the, is that is that fourth wall, fifth wall? You know, I don't pay attention. I'm eighth not into the wall. whole wall analogy. We're in the eighth wall. The only, there's only one wall I'm interested in. What? What's that? <laughs> the Walmart? <laughs> the wall that Trump's building. Come on, oh. you, I set you up. I set you up. And you, you missed how You never missed the setup. I know, but not that way. I, I don't know man. why I'm thinking the Walmart. Because no. you had this look on your face. Yeah. And so I assumed it was something really bad. And yeah, that's it why is pivoted, bad. And that's why I pivoted to Walmart. Well, well, what's worse than well, Walmart? The wall. <laughs> <laughs> For the record, I'm all about strong borders and all that. But, you know, come on. The wall's funny. All right. Um, <laughs> so you doing okay? You, you ready to record? I'm ready. Let's Feeling do this. Good? Cool. Well, we're going to actually talk about something, you know, serious here. And we, we oftentimes talk about serious things. I think in the end, most of what we talk about is serious. But this is actually serious and sensitive. Um, you already, you know, you, you know what we're talking about because you see the title of the episode. Yeah. And um, we wanted to get to this earlier, actually. So I think it's good on the front end to apologize. Like we really did sincerely want to talk about this, uh, but just we're not able to. Yeah, and 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 maybe maybe it was ninety percent not able to, and also ten percent is like uh, maybe just a little sure bit of time we, to think this exactly. through. Exactly, think it through, um, and research a bit more to make sure that because you know there have been sometimes people come at us when we talk about hard topics that are a little volatile. bit off the cuff, a little bit off the cuff. Maybe we don't say enough. Maybe. Well, I don't know if we're off the cuff because we're we're, sometimes, pretty, we're pretty off the cuff. Not about the serious things, though, Joe. Off, not the, about, off the cuff means that we haven't prepared. I think for the serious things, like when we talk about race and stuff like that, we do spend a little bit of time trying nah, to. That's pretty off the cuff, man. That's, that's if, if maybe you're preparing a lot. <laughs> I, you know, I just want to make you know because we, we take those things kind of. Yeah, we do take them seriously. Exactly. So yeah. I want to make you know. We wanted that extra time. Okay, so how many hours of prep did you put in for the race episode? For the race episode, mm-hmm. how do you count? How many hours? Dude, I can't Should I remove that. the S off of that word? What, should you remove? How many hour? Uh, no, how many hour? <laughs> it, was, it was, you know, there was like 35 minutes probably. No, a little mm-hmm. bit more than that. Okay, 45. A little bit more than that. Okay. A little um, bit more than that. So what we're talking about is um, Paige Patterson mm-hmm. and um, the trouble that he's in with uh, with different kinds of people. Um, we wanted to talk about the this whole Paige Patterson Incident and, debacle and some of the things that he has said about uh, women. Um, we want to talk about the response to that, but we also want to talk about, in general, we want to talk about uh, the dismissive attitude that many evangelical leaders do have towards women, and uh, we also want to talk about the fear that many people have for rebuking or addressing yeah. problems that are prominently on display among. Big leaders or quote unquote heroes. Yeah, right? I mean, I think fear and di- I think there's dismissiveness there as well. Oh yeah, yeah, you know? because it's like you're either afraid to say something or that's your boy. Like, what exactly. do you, what, what do you, what do you, I'm going to get something out of this. Yeah, yeah, right. So, uh, so what what happened? Like, what's I mean, there's been I mean, man, Washington Post, all kinds of things are happening. I mean, if you were to just right, let me just do this. If I were to type into Google right now, just Paige Patterson. Yeah. Like, just type that in and yep. I hit enter. The top. 
the top, the top story. The top story is 2,500 Southern Baptist women are calling out Paige Patterson. It's the evangelical community's hashtag Me Too moment. Yeah. Or the second one is thousands of women are pushing back against a top Southern Baptist leader. Here's oh, why. What would the third one be? Uh... Over 2,000 women demand resignation of president of Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. Yeah, so, I mean, you definitely don't want, when you put somebody's name uh, into Google, the top thing to be uh, people are mad at what you. What happens if they put Jofo? Uh, Jofo? I don't know. I, I don't think it does anything for Jofo. I mean, it'll do something, but I don't think it's us. All right, let's see. Jofo. If you put that in, top, top hit result, is... They had a wonderful 2018 Doctrine Devotion Conference. No. Nope. top story. No. Nope. Second oh, top Oh, goodness. Story. Urban Dictionary. Do... Wait, listen. Oh, never mind. Do Don't not. Go. Do not. Do not. This is a censorship <laughs> advisory warning. Oh, we just figured this out Please do not. <laughs> do not type in JOFO and read <laughs> what it means do it. And that's on, on Urban Dictionary. Because that is, that on, is you. That's on you. Oh, my that's goodness. That's on you if you do it. We gave you the warning. Oh, time. my gosh. That is super no, offensive. St- I'm so sorry. No, it's so it's embarrassing. No, well, yeah, now, but, I'm going to be, now they're going to Google me and I'm going to be on there for the Me Too thing. Jeez. <laughs> Super. I'm really sorry, guys. So, yeah, thanks a lot, Jimmy, for making me Google Joe. It's, it's out of my. It's out of my work computer. Oh, okay. that's on your church computer. <laughs> no, this is on my my uh, your church iPad. Yeah, but I use the deep web for everything. So oh, is that there's no trail. A, there's no trail. <laughs> oh, why do you need the deep web? I don't have the deep. I'm joking. Come on. You've never been on the deep web. I have definitely been on the deep web. Mm. Yeah, I had to do some experimenting, some exploring, some investigation into what goes down in the deep web. I and to that, see and how that it was what last week? No, no, it was well, maybe a year or two ago, two years ago. <laughs> two, two years, years ago. ago. Why would you need it two years ago? Well, I didn't need it. I wanted to find out. Like, is the deep? How real is the deep web? But nobody cares. We're talking, we'll, we'll talk about the deep web some other time. <laughs> so messed up. It's not like I went all the way down to the dark web. I, I hope you didn't. It's a whole other thing. All right. Oh my goodness. So what did he do? All right. What did he do? Let's see here. Sorry, I you thought, don't know. Just say what he did. No, okay. Well, uh, at, at he tells a story in a sermon. He talks about he's talking about women um, and women being made right. It was a sermon on Eve, I think, or creation, so, exactly. Or something. About and, and you know what? Here's the thing. I think the heart of what he was trying to talk about is like the beauty of women, right? Like yeah, women are beautiful. That, that, exactly. That God God had created man and got we got Joe, right? Uh, <laughs> but God <laughs> God created women, and I mean we got. They're absolutely wonderful. Yeah. You know? It's like Everybody is fearfully and wonderfully made, but there's a reason that we refer to, at least historically, or we have many have referred to the women as the fairer sex. Right? Exactly. Because women have a natural uh, sort of a beauty to them that is appealing to people, in not, in not even in a, in, a, in a sexual way necessarily. Yeah. They're just, you know, women are, women are awesome, right? Yeah. And so actually, I'm going to read what kind of uh, the Washington Post wrote. Uh, and this is by Sarah Bailey on May 7th. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she writes, in sermons he gave between 2000 and 2014 that have been made public, Paige Patterson, seminary president and former denominational president, has encouraged women who are abused by their husbands not to divorce but to pray instead. He also commented the sermons on female bodies, including that of a teenage girl, 16, uh, and women's appearances. Right. And so I think that's where kind of this – what. Rightfully, sh- rightfully so, a backlash. Yeah, right. So the the, the big thing that was tipping this off is is uh, this this vi- this audio resurfaced of Paige talking about divorce and uh, and and abuse, and essentially said that um, a, a, a woman that he knew was being abused to some yeah. degree, and uh, he told her, you know, go home. Divorce is not an option. Go home and pray. And he says, when you, when the, it's going to get worse, the abuse is going to get worse. But just do that. And but suffer so, well. Suffer well. So she goes home, she prays. The husband beats her up. She comes in with a couple black eyes. And, um, and she's all mad about it when she sees him the next time. But he's saying, but what she doesn't know is that her husband got saved that morning and he came in. And all, sort of the end justifies the means sort of a thing. Yeah. Um, and people were horrified at of this course. thought that, um, that he's telling a woman to just go back home to an abusive husband. And then there was... This other remark that he made about a, a 16-year-old girl, a, a child, uh, and looking you know what, you know, very and nice. Exactly. Like, but in a creepy, in like, a very creepy, in a very creepy, way. creepy and, way. And we're going to go ahead and, you know. We'll put that gonna, audio up. We'll put that audio up. Is that a beautiful word? Value man. And that's the word he uses to describe only the creation of woman. He value bend you. It means to beautifully and artistically construct. And I didn't need to learn Hebrew to figure that out either. Uh And and so 
That's what he says beautifully and artistically construct. One night I had been speaking somewhere and a woman caught me at the close of the service and she was really unhappy with me and was giving me what for. And uh, I have that happen every once in a while and I just sat there and listened, took my punishment and uh, standing right next to her was an older teenage boy and he had a friend with him and they were quite humiliated at what mama was doing. They were looking at the floor and wishing that they weren't there but she was undeterred. She was heading in for the kill and uh, she was working me over good. Well about that time a very attractive young co-ed walked by. And uh, she wasn't more than about 16, but <clears throat> uh, let me just say, she was nice. And uh, as she walked by, they didn't think that Mama was paying any attention to them. And one young man turned to the other one and he said, man, is she built. In the middle of the sentence, she stopped, wheeled around, slapped a hand over his mouth, loosened his teeth, said, young man, don't you ever say anything like that again. If you do, I'll mop up the face of the earth with you. I saw my opportunity. I said, ma'am, leave him alone. He is just being biblical. That's exactly what the Bible says. So, you know, he, he has said some things that it's not just an issue of a, a view of divorce and remarriage, um, like th that's up for debate, of course. Um, it is the way that he has spoken about women on a number of occasions that is offensive uh, to many people and uh, demeaning in the eyes of many people. Um, and, and it's and it's opened him up to uh, a lot of backlash, especially in light of the this re I don't want to say renewed, I would say this new sensitivity to abuse and to the abuse of women with the whole Me Too movement. And so that's really what's going on here. There's been a lot of pushback. Uh, and not only on what Paige has said and the attitude yeah. that is displayed there, but there's also been pushback on the, the, the what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, the hesitancy yeah. to confront a bigwig like Dr. Patterson. Yeah, and I think that's the part that like, you know, there's like, there's two things that go through my head. One is this has resurfaced. So then that tells me people had heard it before and did nothing about mm -hmm. it then. And people are hearing it now. And people are still hesitant or unwilling to do something now. Mm -hmm. Now, there are a lot of courageous women out there that are speaking out yep. um, and standing firm. And, and I'm thankful for, for, the, for those women. I'm thankful for the men that are also uh, participating in that. What is troubling is as a convention as a whole mm -hmm. is not standing up. Right. Right. And so listen, um, cards on the table. A, I would say that um, what, one of the things that you need to know, and you probably already do know if you're a regular listener to the podcast, is that Jimmy and I are sensitive to the issue of abuse um, yeah. because Jimmy has a big heart and because I was a, a victim of sexual abuse as a kid. So um, we're, we're, we're sort of dialed into that. And no, I do it's not. It's easy to get emotional about right? it. Yeah, emotional or violent, you know, whatever. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so Joe and I <laughs> react Jimmy gets in emotional. <laughs> yeah, I want to get a little violent. Yeah. Um, a little angry dwarf. So, um, you know, we, we want to say that to say that when we process this stuff, we actually have to think very carefully and clearly yeah. because we don't want emotions to, to push us in a particular direction. So let me just say a couple things. Number one, um, I don't, do not think everyone who is accused is automatically guilty and should be treated as such. I agree. In those cases. Um, and I, but I do think we should take accusations very seriously yes. and investigate and be very careful with people that make the accusations and not treat them as liars or schemers or anything like that. I would also say that, uh, it, because this is up in this whole discussion, I do not think misogyny is a plague, uh, that is everywhere. I do think misogyny exists, like right? yeah. this, this hatred for women. Uh, but I do think it, that it is very evident that there is uh, a pride and elitism and an arrogance among many evangelical leaders that dismisses women and really considers them second-class citizens in the kingdom. I've, I've seen this. Other people have seen it. Um, and so that's, that's kind of where we're at. It's like I don't think racism is everywhere and that there's this plague of racism. Yeah. But racism is very real and it does exist. And then there are various levels of prejudice and ignorance that are everywhere. So just to put everything out there, mm -hmm. um, that's just we want to say that on on the front end. 
What's 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 bothering you the most about this, Jimmy? When you when you when you started to see these stories come out about Dr. Patterson yeah. and, and all of this, what's the thing that really like that that what's the flag that you first noticed? The flag that I first noticed, uh, and I I, I I mentioned it already, is the lack of mm-hmm. response from the convention. Yeah, and I think part of it is <clears throat> so. I this is going to come off really critical of Dr. Patterson. I guess I assume the man's not going to repent. I get, you know what I mean? Like I assume in my head that it's his non-response, his non- well, He has issued a response. Oh, yeah, okay. His his response of, it's not a big deal. I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. Uh, tells me, you know, the guy's not going to make it right. Right? You know what I mean? Like that's, and I guess I assumed that based on other things that he has done and said, that that is typical for him. What I'm horrified about is that our convention is not doing something about it and not making this right. Should be a public, there should be a response, right? Correct. I I think. um, And so now individuals have started to respond. Which is good. And it'll start there. It'll start there, which is encouraging. Uh, But even, uh, even homeboy, uh, uh, you know who I'm talking about. Nope. Homeboy. We call everybody homeboy. I know. Homeboy, homeboy with the straggly goatee. Ed Stetzer. Even oh, Stetzer. You got, we will link to that. That link to was that. a fantastic article. Exactly. We're, we're Ed, you know. Uh, homeboy. Home, homeboy. <laughs> he, he talks about it. and he, But he, what he highlights, though, yeah. he highlights the fact that people venerate mm-hmm. Paige Patterson because Paige Patterson won the culture war or the inerrancy war yeah. uh, back in the 1880s or whatever it was. <laughs> 1970s. <Yeah>. Listen, <laughs> well, so just if you're not a Southern Baptist, you don't know who Paige Patterson is. Um, and so just so you understand, when denominations had gone liberal and then splintered off mm-hmm. and started new ones, um, after that, like in the 1920s, 30s, 40s, the SBC was beginning to lean liberal. And so by the 60s and the 70s, we had a lot of liberal leadership. Yeah. And I don't mean politically liberal, I mean theologically liberal. Yeah. And so questioning the inerrancy of scripture, uh, bodily resurrection of Jesus, things like that. Revisionist history, all that. Right, right. So there were guys like Paige Patterson and others who loved the Bible, championed the Bible, and there was a, and we can just call it, I mean, there was a political... Um, maneuver by bringing a bunch of church people in to restore power to people who actually believe the Bible. Yes. Now, I don't have a problem with that. Okay. Yeah, now, and how, so, I, mean, I mean, praise God for yeah. the role that, that Dr. Patterson played right. during that and, time. And Judge Paul Pressler is another guy yeah. who's also being accused of uh, sexual impropriety at the moment. Mm. Um, so all it doesn't mean he's guilty. I don't know. I'm just saying like that's, what's, that's something that's going on right now. So people look at at a guy like Page or or uh, Paul Pressler, and they say this guy was used by the Lord to save the convention from liberal theology. Let's give him a pass, and, uh, and they they love it. And it's just, it's so. Why are people? Why would people not want to address the issue? So there's this respect, veneration, like mm-hmm. don't touch that guy. He just let him alone. And then wh- why else? Why else do people not want to say anything about uh, the untouchable leaders? What What do you think? Well, one, I think. Um I think there's a fear there. I think mm-hmm. there's a fear that there's going to be blowback or pushback. They don't want to put themselves out there. And actually, I think someone else wrote about that, and it might have actually been Ed, and I, and I apologize, I don't remember who mentioned it, but someone did mention just because you don't see it publicly doesn't mean it's not happening privately. Mm-hmm. And, okay, great. Good, start there. Start That's there. That's fine. But as a convention, uh, that needs to be addressed publicly. Dude, what we do as Southern Baptists is every year we make public announcements. We pass resolutions, yes. right? So uh, eh, maybe it's time to you know say something. Like say ERLC something about that. Could say something here. I mean, uh, we're down with the ERLC. Yeah, you know. Yeah, me. you know me. Um, so I, I think that that's. I think you're right. I think the, the fear is 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 a legitimate reason. A fear of reprisals, like what's going to happen. Yeah. You know, if you're a denominational leader, if you're serving in the convention, something could happen. If you're at a big church, maybe you'll lose your job. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe, or, or I mean, just look at everything that happened with Russ Moore. Yeah. Right. Russ Moore took a stand, and mm-hmm. I would actually say I'm actually going to say it's. It, it, there's a lot of similarities here. There's a lot of parallels here when uh, he took a stand because I think one of the things that uh, when I was talking about said at the front end about whether it's fear or unwilling mm-hmm. um, is, you know, I mean, look at someone like Trump who, you know, was venerated mm-hmm. among our convention about, by a lot of people. 
And then, you know, Russ Moore stands up and then he's demonized because of that. Right. We're, we're willing to give a pass because we might get what we want out of it. Right. Right. Or because we don't want the other option, you know. Uh, and I think here you kind of get that, that at least I have that same sense here. When I look at these leaders not standing up is we're unwilling to um, because we're afraid, but because we might think there's blowback and because there's something we're trying to get out of this. Right, right. Some sort of status. Yeah, yeah. And and let me just say also for the record, I like saying things for the record to clarify things Yeah, I appreciate that. Especially these days. Um, Like, okay, so uh, Russ took a stand on Trump. Uh, Listen, and the reason it was so important is because as conservatives, we blasted Bill Clinton for his immorality. Correct. And we're all about integrity and character. And now we've got a guy running for president who doesn't have character, and he's rather an immoral guy. Yeah, just look at at, uh, Franklin Graham's uh, statements concerning Clinton and, and put them side by side. Right. So, and then all of a sudden we're okay with Trump. We're so okay th- with Trump. All of a sudden, oh, it doesn't matter about yeah. his, his morality. We're not, we're not electing a moral leader. And so let, let me just say this. I don't have a problem with people who voted for Trump. I really don't. No, that, not does, at all. that doesn't bother me. Um, I don't, I, I mean, I don't think Trump was a good choice. I don't think Hillary was a good choice. Um, so like, I, I, I know I anarchy, get, I get, anarchy. No, that's no, all no, Joe wants. Right. Anarchy. It's, all, it's kind of untested. I don't really know, but anarchy, <laughs> anarchy is just about freedom, dude. Anyways, um, I would say that uh, that Russ did get you know pilloried for that, and and maybe he could have said some things differently or better, but um, yeah, he took a stand and he really got he got beat up for it. So then, what happens then if a, a denominational leader takes a stand against Paige Patterson, someone yeah. that is venerated, someone that yeah. is has a stronghold down south? What, what happens then? Well, uh, yeah. I mean, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, the money, gonna, I think it comes down to money. It comes down, I, I, I'm i assuming, that's my, for the record, that's only my view, not Joe's or anybody else's. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know if it's all, all about money, but it, it is. Because that's a, what people will do. I'll do that in business. Absolutely. Yeah, but there's not, I don't know, I don't, there's not a lot of money that's exchanging hands like that. It, it doesn't really work that way in the convention, but I do think it is but about the convention pay churches pay fees or not fees, but they, they, they have, what do you call them? Oh, Pers- you see what I'm saying? You right, start right. To so withhold. Yeah, churches can withhold money. Exactly. From- so imagine if Russ said something about Paige Patterson or imagine if, yeah. if someone else, you know, if there was a, if there's a line item, that you're giving towards why well, I'm not going to give towards that. Look what they said. Yeah, about yeah, page. I see what you're saying there. Yep. Yeah. That that's a possibility. There's also a sense in which, Oh, if, if you're going to cross that line, then you are not in the club. Mm. Uh, we're not going to work with you. We're not going to be with you. If you want something, we're not going to help you. Oh, which is why we're not in the club. Oh, yeah, mm. we're not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you should stop talking about page all the time. Don't, you know what? I'm going to just say what I'm thinking. I can say, I can think what I want. This is America. Yeah. This is a this is America. Yeah, yeah. I can do what I want. That's right. On this side of the wall. On this side of the wall. On the other side of the wall. <laughs> it's not it means nothing. No. <laughs> um, all right. I also think. I, but thinking about this, I also think that um, you know people uh, people. We it's like we give people passes for different reasons, right? Sometimes because yeah. that's your boy. Like I love that guy. What he said, like oh, maybe maybe you agree with him, you give him a pass. Maybe you don't agree with him, but like, hey, what are you gonna do? I like people look at a guy like Paige Patterson. It's kind of like your old racist grandpa. Like yeah. not yours, but mine, right? Yeah, you know, no, not no. my grandpa. Oh, your but, grandma. You know, it's it's like you know they're old. You know what are you gonna do? That's just kind of how they were raised, and that's not an excuse, man. Like no, that, just no. because that is what they. Uh, were taught or that was the environment that they grew up in, that doesn't give them a pass. We still have to address the issue, especially as leaders, right? So when we're talking about pastors and denominational leaders uh, in the Southern Baptist Convention, we need to say when something is off and when something is good, right? When when somebody is saying something hard, we need to back it, and when somebody, if it's good, and when somebody is saying something terrible, we need to go ahead and address the issue. And and I think it's fine to go to somebody, and I think it's good to go to somebody privately and give them a chance. Which is good. I'm going to agree with that. If they aren't, then we, we got to do say it something. publicly. We got to say something. And I, and I, you know, I would be, and I think this looks bad on us as a convention. Well, of course it. Well, we're, first of all, we're Southern Baptists. We already look bad in the world. We already look world horrible. When we're it comes conservative. To, yeah. Uh, we believe the Bible and, and we're called Southern Baptists. We're called matter. Southern Baptists. I mean, and then just even the history on race, mm-hmm. you know, is, and, and for the most part, I mean, complementarian, right? But yeah. unfortunately it's. Hard complementarian for some, right. and yeah. so complementary, complementary, and so this kind of really feeds into that that narrative uh, of male chauvinism, right? And it's like you know, they're, they're, I think we can make differences between chivalry and chauvinism, and and all of that. And you guys know where we land, right? We are complementary. We believe that there are di- soft. D- different <laughs> different roles for um, for men and women in the home and in the church. 
but uh, they're very complementary, and uh, the, the church would not be the church without women. Uh, we desperately need women to serve and to lead in their appropriate spheres, Correct. and we should honor them and love them. And there, there has been, like Beth Moore just wrote that article, right? Um, this, she wrote this letter talking about her experience among yeah. evangelicals. Um, and okay, so a lot of you are already like very intently listening. What, is it, what, are, the, what are they going to say about oh, Beth Moore? Oh, uh, okay, so, um, well, I know what Paige would say about her. Uh, <laughs> oh, Jojo. Nice. <laughs> oh, Joe, now I have You're not editing that out. You can leave that in. Come on, what are you talking about? <laughs> um, I, would, I, I think that... Um, Oh, so regarding Beth Moore, um, yeah. there's lots of people that want to call her a heretic, and she's completely crazy and all of that. Uh, I don't think Beth Moore is a great theologian. Um, I do think she works hard at being a Bible teacher, and I know she's had a very positive impact on lots of people. I think her associations are, are suspect. I don't like some of the people that she rolls with. And she said some things that I definitely don't like, but um, I think she loves Jesus. Uh, I don't think she's a heretic. And um, so she wrote this letter. So regardless of what you think, even if, even, okay, fine. Say she is a heretic, if that's your perspective. Okay. But she wrote this letter explaining that this is the experience that I and other women have in the evangelical church. And there's value to yeah. trying to understand that perspective right. because I don't understand it. And, and, and the people that she's interacting with are people that don't consider her a heretic, by the way. So they would consider her a part of, you know, Team Jesus. Yeah. So, and so what is that treatment like? And it is... And it, it, some people want to call it misogyny, and, and there's, a, there's a lot of rhetoric, but at the very least, what we do see is a dismissive, an arrogant and dismissive attitude towards women who are seeking to teach other women specifically, right? That's, their, that, that's mostly their heart. That, that's what they want to be doing. So I, I, I do see that, and I think that it's important that we, we recognize that and that we're willing to address the issue. One of the things that, that we continue to work on at Redeemer yes. is – the way that we work out uh, complementarianism Correct. in practical ways. And I remember when we first started Redeemer, and uh, our views haven't changed on you know, men and women in the 10, 11 years that we've yeah. been here. Um, it's very historic, very classic, uh, complementarian views. See the Danvers statement. But um, I, I did have a couple that was with us for a long time, many years, and uh, they wanted to know, like, well, so what's your view? I laid it out for them, and they said, so women can do X, Y, and Z, for example. And I said, sure, they can do that. And they said, so why aren't women doing that in your church? Mm. If they're allowed to do that, why aren't they doing it? Why do you have men doing everything? And I took that to heart. I said, that's a really good question. If, yeah. it's, if it's permissible, if it's good, if it's biblical, then we should have women doing I those agree. things and not just men. And so we began to address those issues. Because sometimes you're just blind. You just do what you do. And you've always done it. You don't really think about it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's good to evaluate and to reflect and to always ask. We've talked about this before. Uh, what is right about this argument or perspective and what yep. is wrong about it? Yep. Um, if you can do that, you can actually learn a lot more than just dismissing it outright because you find a couple of things that are wrong and you throw the whole thing out. Correct. So, I mean, what do we do then, Joe? I mean, <laughs> what do we do with, with, I mean, what do we do at the convention? I mean, I, I'm just trying to think through like. Yeah. Okay. With this whole thing, what are we supposed yeah, to do? But uh, uh, specifically, here's a guy that's supposed to be delivering a, a sermon. Yeah. I mean, what does that communicate, not just to the, con like, to our convention, the women in our convention, but to the, like. To the world, I guess you right. know, to the to out people that are not part of it, right? That that, yeah. that, that communicates something. I I think it does. Um, and this is not a Calvinism thing, okay? I don't. That's that's not what this is about. No, we disagree with him on that. But this is this is something. Listen, we can have fellowship with a lot of people. You know that we have fellowship with people that are that are not Calvinists that are wrong. Yeah, that are, yeah, they might, yeah, <laughs> and they think we're wrong, and that's fine. That's fine. We, but we can still have fellowship with them. We yeah. love them. We know that they love the Lord and. And, they're making and disciples, man. They're that's preaching it. The gospel. They're doing some some wonderful things, and we have disagreements on 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 the work of the the Holy Spirit today. Right, right. right. But like Sam Storms, man. Exactly. We disagree with Sam Storms on the gifts, but he's arguing from the Bible. Exactly. And he is awesome. Exactly. But here we have something that, it, to me, um, not just needs to be a it, it needs to be addressed. It needs to be addressed hard, man. Look, like when you read Baxter, when you read Spurgeon, when you read the greats on the character of a minister. Okay, nobody's going to be perfect, mm -mm. but but 
it, we need to be held accountable for the things that we do and the things that we say. Yeah. And um, as, as leaders, right, we're not held to a standard outside of Scripture, but we are held to that scriptural standard. And I'll just be honest, man. I was creeped out and offended by some of the things that Paige has said in these sermons. Oh, I would hate for my for, for any of my kids to be. I would hate for any of our members, anybody in our church, to be at Southwestern under that sort of leadership. So that that definitely bothers me. That this this whole thing, and I, so I do think it needs to be addressed. Uh, personally, I think that uh, we have a responsibility to say, "Listen, this guy has said some very inappropriate things." And listen, some of you are going, "He's an old man. He's just uh, he's from a different generation." I don't care. That doesn't that I does not excuse. I don't it. care. What he said was wrong. If he were to if he were to confess and repent, and they want him to go up, like whatever. But um, but until then, man, I don't know why they don't pull that. So, which is why I believe, you know, this again, for just you know, for for, for the record, for the record, yeah. I couldn't think of the word. Yeah, uh, I'd rather you go off the record. I think <laughs> off the record is more fun. <laughs> for the record, I'm speaking for myself and not Joe. I actually think this is a discipline issue, Joe. This is an unrepentant sin. This is unrepentant. Oh, I tell you what. If I said some of the things that he has said, I would oh, have. Oh my goodness! I would have a, the elder. Well, first of all, oh uh, the, 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 my goodness! Like the elder, the, the elders wouldn't have to say anything. The whole church would be like, "Dude, what did you just say?" Oh my goodness! So they would pull me aside. They'd be like, "Do you realize? Like we 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 assume your heart's in the right place. Okay, we'll give you that for now. But what you just said was demeaning, insensitive, and ungodly. And they would help me to see that. And if I wouldn't repent about that." You'd be under church yeah, discipline. Yeah, man, for sure, for sure. Oh, you would be under church discipline. You would no longer be preaching. Uh, we'd be walking. Hold we your would, horses. You're not an elder yet, okay? We'd be working, stop, through, stop we'd be like working through. Come on, Joe. I mean, there's no way you would allow that. You, no, there's no way no. any of us would allow that no. until repentance is seen. Yeah. It, again, it's like, listen, I've, I've, as a pastor, as an elder at this church, I've had people say, hey, man, what you did. Uh, and what you and this other elder did, I don't want to say any names, but Pastor Pat, um, what you guys <laughs> did was insensitive and thoughtless and hurtful. Mm-hmm. So what do we do? We call them in, we sit down, and we repent and apologize in front of them and Correct. ask for their forgiveness. That is that is what you do. I, we had no intention. It wasn't about intention. It was about what actually you said or did. Yeah. That's the issue. So you just got to deal with it. Uh, you know, I, don't, I, I have no idea what's going to happen. I have a hard time thinking that they're going to say... Page isn't preaching at the SBC, which then reflects that our convention mm-hmm. uh, is cowardly. Yeah, there's a problem. There's, yeah. there's a problem, right? I was just talking with the guy. I'd love to get him on the podcast. By the way, we haven't talked about this, but um, this guy, he is a uh, leadership guy, and he counsels oh, yeah. churches, police forces, businesses on yeah, yeah. leadership. Be good to have him in. He's Absolutely. brilliant. Yeah. He's brilliant. His name is Roy Roy Bethke. The guy is just, and he's. A, He's a man. I just love this guy. Anyways. He's he, a man? He, yeah. Oh, oh, he's yeah. a man. He's not a woman. That's why we're going to have him on, because we don't have the woman oh, on. Oh, don't say that. Oh, but, and he is built. So let me just say that. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> so creepy. We're so, this uh, is horrible. So. Um, All we need is a van and candy. The, <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I can just, now I imagine Paige Patterson go, you know, trolling the The Patterson streets. panel van. The, the Patterson <laughs> <laughs> Now well, we're gonna have to repent, repent for something. I'm you sure. want some candy? All right. So, um, here, here or, or some deer jerky. It's probably because he's a hunter. <laughs> yeah, That's probably what it is. <laughs> They're like, ew, no. Why do I want deer jerky? It's like, oh, wrong strategy. Yeah, sorry, Paige. <laughs> um, so he was talking to me though recently about the difference between bravery and courage, right? And so bravery is an instantaneous action that doesn't require much thought, right? There's a crisis or something happens, there's no resistance to, you just boom, you act. Mm. Lots of people are brave in certain circumstances and lots of people do the right thing. But, but courage, courage is different because courage means that there is, there is resistance, there is a cost, and there is thought given to it and now you have to do the hard thing after thinking about it. Wow. I like that. That I never thought, I, I've never, diff- yeah, Dude, we're going to have this guy on. Separate. Yeah. He's yeah. really good. That's really good. So, all that to say, yeah, I, I do think that it would demonstrate that there is some cowardice um, among our convention, at least from our perspective. Uh, otherwise, we're talking about a difference of opinion, and I'm going to argue not, about this that. Is not, this is not a difference well, of opinion. It, could, it, it is a difference of opinion if they, if they disagree with us, but I would say that this is a moral issue. This is a, I, I mean, you can say it's, it's a not a difference of opinion when you're wrong. Well, it's still a difference of opinion. No, no, no. no of course no, it is. No, it's not. We can have a difference of opinion on, okay. on the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We can't have a difference of opinion on... It's the same thing. It's truth. It's either right or it's wrong. The difference of opinion 
it doesn't change whether it's a right or wrong moral issue. It's a difference of opinion. It just means the stakes are high. All right, the stakes are higher. Fine. Yeah. All right. So, and I don't know that the stakes are necessarily higher when you're talking about high end theology about the gospel. They are equally significant, but in different ways, right? We're talking about yeah. eternal significance. That's yeah, really good clarity. In some ways, but anyways, really good clarity. All, all that to say, again, um, I think that we need to deal with this. I think we need to have some hard conversations, mm-hmm. and I, I think we need to stop being afraid to just say what we really think about this. If we had more people saying like, "That's jacked up. That's a messed up thing to say." And I hope I hope he doesn't he doesn't need to clarify. He needs to apologize for what he said. It was wrong. Correct. Apologize. Yeah. Uh, you know, that goes a long way. And that's just and it's not like you're just being accused of this. There's audio, multiple audio. Well, no, they, they took it down. Well, why would they take it down though? Didn't Joe? you just read that I know, article? Why, I know, but why would they take it down? Well, maybe why because would someone take it down? It's too hot right now. Maybe it was crashing their servers. Maybe it was just an expedience. You really thing. think so? No, All right, now, no, yeah, I think it was exactly. embarrassing. <laughs> exactly. So why are you embarrassed then? You know, that's like, the thing. It, so subliminally, you understand that this is wrong, and there's something messed up about or this that you, you felt like you need to take it down. Either you think it's wrong, or you don't like the heat that you're getting. It's a difference between evangelical repentance and legal repentance, right? Ooh. So legal repentance, um, the Puritans way, legal repentance is when you repent. Uh, when you stop doing what you were doing, right? This kind of repents. It, you repent of of your wrongdoing because the consequences suck. The consequences are painful. It's embarrassing. It's hurt. It, it's uncomfortable. That's legal repentance, not evangelical repentance. Uh, evangelical repentance or gospel repentance is when you understand the significance of your sin. You sin not only against people made in God's image, your neighbors, your brothers and your sisters, but you sin against God. And so you repent for the glory of God and the good of others. That's gospel or evangelical repentance versus uh, legal repentance. It's, it's it's more like that. Now, Joe, I'm going to put you on the spot. Oh, great. And I'm going to ask you a question. All right. I'm ready. All right. So you had mentioned before about the history of Redeemer and that couple that came to you and said, okay, if women are allowed to do X, Y, you know, why are they not yep. doing it more? I mean, can we ask that as, as a convention? You know, what is it then? You know, uh, how? I mean, that because that's even part of the whole, the whole, uh, Discussion on race, right? Like, right. How then are we encouraging women to have a a larger role or voice within right. a convention? Well, the, the the problem is is that you know the the BFM or the BF and M two thousand uh, as a statement on on this, and it explains the roles, right? Now, outside of that. The way it's implemented is going to vary from church to church. And so because it's not a proper denomination that controls everything that churches believe and do, yes. um, there's a lot of freedom there. So it's not going to mandate much. But I do agree that there ought to be more conversations and dialogue about this publicly, about what, what women can and, 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 and can't do at local churches based on the convictions that are drawn from Scripture and good theology. So at Redeemer, we believe that the office of pastor slash elder slash bishop, it's all the same thing for us, with the office of elder is limited to qualified, mm-hmm. called men. We don't apologize for that. We see this in scripture. We argue for this. We do not think a woman, regardless of her qualifications, can serve or should serve as an elder of a local church. Um, now, if I'm just honest, boy, it'd be easier if I could just say women could be. Like, that's an easier position for me to hold, oh, right? Goodness, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. It just feels so good. Yeah. yeah. Everybody <laughs> high fiving me all the time. <laughs> uh, woo! But I, I would say that, you know, we, we hold that. And then in the home, we do believe that uh, the husband bears the greater responsibility as head of the home than the wife does. It doesn't mean that they don't work in tandem uh, uh, equally, um, together, in unison. And it certainly does not mean that men or husbands can belittle, abuse, or control or domineer their wives. It does not mean that. Can't yeah. do that. So there's a whole long dialogue about all of that. But at Redeemer, um, we don't have a problem with women reading scripture or... Uh, there's a whole bunch are of things. part of worship being deacons. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of things that, that we think women can do even out. So, and once you remove it from the, like, here's my conviction. I can't speak for all the elders here. Once you remove it from the Sunday for the record, for the record um, taking it outside of the Lord's day gathering. I don't have a problem with women teaching mixed audience. Yeah. Cause that's, it's, it's no longer an authoritative issue. Um, for me, that's just not a big deal. Now, some people are going to say that I'm not a complementarian. Well, that's fine. Yeah, we're um, okay with that. But, uh, but I again, when it comes to authority in the local church, talking about elders, that needs to be men. But then, how do we work this out? How do we make sure that we are empowering every single person in our church to use all of their gifts and all of their callings in all of the ways that are lawful or 
biblical, uh, to their greatest degree. If we don't actually have these hard conversations about what men and women can and can't do, then we're not going to be able to implement this, like let them exercise all of them. This is why we do Leadership Lab exactly, with men and women. the way that we do it, yep. We want men and women to be lifted up, to use all of their gifts to their maximum potential so that if, like, listen, I think my wife is called to preach. Absolutely. She doesn't, she doesn't preach a ton, but she does preach. And she has preached with me uh, to a mixed audience, but generally at she... At a retreat, yeah. yeah at a conference. At a conference. Yeah. Uh, but she wouldn't preach here on the Lord's Day, and she would not want to preach here on no. the Lord's Day. So I, I think we got to flesh this out and figure it out. Exactly. And, and make we, sure that we're, you know... Like, you know, Joe and I, we're, I mean, we're CBMW with Burke. With what? Well, C, you know, Center for Biblical Manhood and okay. Womanhood. Okay, they say a lot. Of, they write a lot of weird stuff too, man. Well, uh, well, not, well, Denny, well, now that Denny Burke is there, it's, you know. They still got a lot of crazy stuff. I'm just it. saying we're not like the Owen CBMW, <laughs> no, right? Listen, <laughs> I, you know, I'll just tell you right now. I'm not a big CBMW fan. I'm just, I'm just yeah, not. Yeah, yeah, but we're okay with the Danvers, but again. I like the Danvers. Yeah, but we're, you know, like I'm saying, I'm the leadership actually makes an impact on how how friendly I am with that organization. You know, I think Denny Burke needs to stop like pretending that he's a young guy that skateboards. Okay, can I just say that? No, what? no, oh, I'm <laughs> you sorry. Can't say that. Oh, edit. Okay, no. edit. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it in. Edit. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah so I'll, I'll uh, listen. I, I think we need to have those conversations. I think the church needs to be very. So I think we need to be proactive in clearly articulating what the scripture says, the yes. limitations on who can and cannot serve um, from a complementarian perspective. But I also think we need to be very proactive in empowering people to do what they're called to do Correct. W- within the bounds of what is biblical. And I also think if anybody should be sensitive of and protective of people who might be abused, maligned, or mistreated, or dismissed, it ought to be the church, right? We're not just supposed to people be a people who love mercy, but we're supposed to be a people who do justice, right? So whether it's on the racism issue, or on the abuse issue, or on the misogyny issue, whatever it is, uh, we need to be careful not to be swallowed up into these political movements without any thought, but we also need to be careful not to dismiss these issues as if they aren't real. Well, we'd love to hear your thoughts. I mean, uh, you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Doc and Devo or on Facebook slash Doctrine and Devotion. You can head out to the website, DoctrineDevotion.com. There you can contact us. You can sign up for the email blast or hit up the store and grab yourself that Cask Strength T-shirt. That T-shirt is hot. Mm, I like it's it. It's hot. It's good. And sip it, don't dip it. Oh, that's a good one. That's a really good one. You need to, you listen, even if you don't know the whole thing behind intinction and all of that, it's just a cool looking t-shirt. So go get that Sip It Don't Dip It shirt. I think it's still called the Anti-Antiquation League. Reform, Reform Christian, Christian Life, whatever, whatever. Whatever the name is that you put up. I didn't put Press that up. Pod every Monday and Thursday. Blog post Brian on Wednesdays. You guys working on it. <laughs> Video content evidence. sporadically. Evidence of you guys working on it. <laughs> Later. Later.